Hi all, this is Dana. In this video I'm going to be showing you about some various types of needles that you can use for cross stitching. So I know everybody thinks oh, a needle is a needle, but that's actually not the case at all. There's quite a wide variety of needles that you can use. Uh, cross stitch only, you tend to need only a couple of different kinds depending on you know the complexity of your project and what you're doing. Uh, so I thought I'd show, cover some of the basics here so you can see what they are. So this one here is a tapestry needle. I believe this is a size 22, so it's a little bit bigger. The sizing for tapestry needles uh, goes, uh, the bigger the number, the smaller the needle. I know, I don't know why, but so for if you're using like say 14 count Ada fabric, uh, then usually a size 24 to 26 is about average for that. But a lot of this is personal preference. You might find you prefer a smaller needle or a bigger needle. You can get petite needles, which are shorter than the normal length needles, uh, which some people really like because then they're not having to drag as much of a needle through the fabric. And if they have smaller hands, they tend to find them the, the petites easier as well. I think John James uh, has some petites that are really good and Bohan is also a very good uh, uh, needle manufacturer. Do try different varieties. People do have quite a wide variety of tastes that they like. So that's your basic tapestry needle. Uh, it's You can see it's got a wider eye so that allows your th uh, sort of thicker threads and whatnot to go through and also it's got a blunt tip. I mean, you can stab yourself with a tapestry needle, but you'd actually have to try pretty hard. The reason is that when it goes through the fabric, you don't actually want the tip of the needle puncturing the fabric directly. You want it to go through the holes that are in the fabric, and that way it prevents, uh, you know, sort of puncturing your, your floss and, and your fabric. So that's why you want a blunt tip when you're doing your cross stitch. All right, the next one I'm going to show you is, this one's a little tricky, so I'm going to move this stuff out of the way and see if I can demonstrate this for you. So this is a, here's the package of them here. These are twin pointed needles. So you can see that they actually have an eye right in the middle. So I'm gonna show you how this works. The reason you'd want to try and use these is if you are using a sewing frame or some something where you're not actually holding your hoop, like this doesn't, you can do this if you're using a hoop, but it's a little trickier. It's a lot easier if your hand's free. So what I'm going to do, I'm just bringing in my little stitching frame here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this low enough. All right, so I'm just going to show you here so you can kind of see. So this is a demonstration. Um, I'm just, this is a scrap piece of fabric so I can demonstrate. But you can see that the eye is actually right in the middle of the needle. So this is really handy in that this type of twin needle, it actually prevents your stitches from be getting twisted. Like you know when you're stitching and your hand will automatically twist your needle slightly as you put the needle through the thread, which ends up twisting your threads and it makes them tangle more, it makes the coverage uh, not as great, things like that. So that's why the twin pointed needle comes in and I'll show you how it works in a second. But one thing you do have to be careful with these is they are a lot more fragile because the eye is in the middle of the needle, so you do have to be quite careful when you're handling them. But basically what you're doing with these is instead of twisting the needle around when you come back the other way, like turning the point around to come back, you keep the needle facing exactly like this. So you go through the fabric, pull it out the other side, go through the fabric, pull it out the other side, through the fabric. So you're not actually turning the needle at all. It's meant to go in and out, almost like a seesaw. So I'll see if I can demonstrate this. I'm sorry, it's a little bit wobbly right now. I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time as doing this. So you pull it through the fabric. And then you wouldn't turn your needle at all. I don't think I can demonstrate this one-handed, but you'd push the needle right back through the other side. So I'll demonstrate what I would be doing in my hand here. So, see, here's your fabric. You're going through the fabric this way. And then instead of turning your needle, which is what you would normally do, you just go over to the next hole and push it back through. So you're just doing this kind of motion. It takes a bit of practice to get used to because most people are used to turning the needle when they get to the back of their fabric, but it is really cool and it does actually help your, your threads lay a lot better. So if you're um, really concerned about your stitches laying really perfectly and whatever, then do try one of these twin pointed needles. They're actually really cool. But yeah, they are a little more fragile than in packet actually says, do not hold them at the eye, like when you're putting it through. So make sure you're holding just above or below the eye when you're pushing your needle through, because that's the most fragile point is that center part. But yeah, they are pretty neat. They do come in different sizes as well. 
So that's those. Uh, another really, really cool thing is big eye needles. And I'll show you those. Got my handy dandy little pin cushion here. Got this one here. So this is, these are super cool. Like, so just looking at that, you don't think it's a needle. Does there's no eye that you can see? It just looks like a little thin piece of metal. I've actually seen some hilarious reviews on Amazon and places like that that sell these needles where people return them because they couldn't figure out where the eye was. And it's like, well, if you ordered them, then theoretically you know what they're used for. So what they are is these. These are I wouldn't use these for normal cross stitch. These are mainly used for beading and really delicate work because the because it is so fine. It can go through. Um, beads really easily but what it is is actually two pieces of metal it's one giant eye and it's very flexible ta-da isn't that cool and it's soldered at the end so neat so you do have to be careful with these they are very fragile they're a little bit bendy too like i've got one that's like five inches long which is great if you're stringing a whole ton of beads and you don't want to keep rethreading your your needle it's really cool. I'm just going to show you with a demonstration of this. So say you got your thread here, you just thread it through the eye there. So you have to kind of hold it open with your fingers and then boop. Hey presto. Done. So it's really cool. When you're stitching, like say your tail is starting to get too short, you just, you'll find that the thread does get a little bit pulled down to that one end and kind of get stuck a little bit. So you might have to just pull it up a little bit pull your thread through a little bit more to get some more tent some more slack going and then and then keep stitching with it but yeah these are fantastic for beads because they go right through those tiny little holes in beads and it makes it really handy you do have to be more careful they, they're not quite as sharp as a normal needle so just be careful when you're working through your fabric if you're working through layers of stitching and whatnot just be aware that these are more fragile so you might have to kind of work it through the holes and work it through the fabric a little bit more than you would with a, a sharper needle but yeah these are genius and you can put two layers of floss for here if you want to use double layer and make sure that your beads are really anchored yeah it's super hand you can use pretty much any type of floss through here that you want as long as it will fit through the eye of the bead it's it's really handy so there's those and then there's also the more traditional beading needles which i've got some here these are these ones you just get at a, any beading shop so you can see the eye on these is really small it's really really small so they are actually pretty tricky to thread you can get special beading thread for them uh, but yeah, they are a little trickier to thread. It's hard to find a needle threader that, that will go through these and still be able to pull the, the floss through. So these ones you pretty much have to uh, thread by hand. Uh, you can see, let's see, I'm just looking at this one. Yeah, this one does have a bit more of a channel on one side than the other. So in the last video I did about uh, different uh, how to thread your needle i mentioned that some needle or most needles have like a, a channel or a groove on one side some have it on both sides this one it's just on the one side so that's the side you should thread from it kind of guides your thread into the eye so beading needles are very very fine obviously they have to go through the tiny beads but they are kind of tricky to thread so that's why i prefer the the big eye needles they're very handy i like them a lot and Another needle that you might want to use is what's called a milliner's needle. So that's these here. This is uh, great for French knots because with a tapestry needle, if you try to do, let's grab my tapestry needle so I can show you. If you try to do a, a French knot with a tapestry needle, what's gonna happen is you can see the eye is wider than the shaft. So you're about to finish your, your knot and then that wider eye pushes the knot apart and it blows up and you get mad and then you start drinking heavily. So <laughs> I would really recommend not using tapestry needles for French knots. So that's why you would want to use something like a milliner's needle because the shaft and the eye is all the same. It's pretty much the exact same uh, circumference. So you're not gonna have that issue of as soon as the eye pulls through the, the knot, then it blows the knot apart. And these are great too for finishing and uh, just generally like, like uh, finishing up edges or sewing pieces together, things like that. It's good good general needle for that. And the last one I want to talk about is this really cool one. So I was helping a, a woman on Facebook having her some stitching issues and she's like, oh, let me send you some of my needles that, you know, as a thank you. And I'm like, oh, you don't have to do that. It's fine. And so she's like, no, no, no. So she's 
I was like, fine. <laughs> Thank you. So she sent me these needles. These are called Easy Guide needles. And they're really neat. I don't know if you can see, but there's a tiny, <coughs> excuse me, a tiny little ball at the end. So basically what it is, it's almost like a combination of a normal sewing needle and a tapestry needle because the little ball acts like a tapestry needle. It prevents it from sort of getting caught up in the fabric and from puncturing the fabric. I mean, you can puncture the fabric if you try, but the little ball kind of makes it slip around and, and try to guide itself into the holes of the fabric rather than going through the fibers of the fabric directly. So it's really neat. And the nice thing about these is they're so fine. Like this is a size 3.6. And she says on her uh, shop page that uh, these this size is good, 3.6 millimeters, I should say. These ones are good for like Ada or Linen, um, Hardanger, um, yeah, even weave things like that. Um, there's another size, it's a little bit bigger, and it's a 4.0 millimeter, and they're good for like um, 10 count Ada, 6 count Ada, perforated paper, waste canvas, um, vinyl, things like that, that, you know, a little bit bigger. But yeah, I think both would probably do well for both of them but the nice thing about these is they're actually made from german steel so they're not going to go black like i've had this one for a couple of days now and i i really like it like it's got less friction when it goes through the fabric and so when you're stitching the the needle does go through the fabric a lot easier than you know the uh, your average tapestry needle because you can see the difference in d diameter of the needles i mean obviously this is a bigger tapestry needle but still it's, it's quite a noticeable difference when you're stitching it's a lot more delicate to stitch through it is a finer needle so i would be more careful like don't start jamming it through like a million layers of floss and you know stuff that might be caught up at the back just be a little bit more careful with it but yeah i do like it i think it's really cool and i'm gonna keep playing with them and and experimenting but yeah i do like them so far I'm very happy she sent them to me um, i'm putting a link to her shop in the description below like i said she did send me these for free as a gift but yeah, like I wouldn't be promoting them or talking about them if I didn't like them. I, I'm just, I just don't do that. I only talk about stuff I actually use and I like. So uh, any other tips that I might have for you? If you're doing something like using metallic threads, I would use a needle that's a little bit bigger than what you might use for your normal embroidery floss. So if you're threading your metallic thread, um, I would use a slightly bigger needle. So that's actually why I keep these bigger tapestry needles around is because they're they're easier for me to, to use with the metallics. So the reason you want a slightly bigger needle is metallics, like this is Krennic and Krennic is amazing and I think it's awesome and it doesn't fray very easily because it's actually a braid. But one issue that can happen with metallics is if they're like single strands or whatever is just the friction of, of traveling through the eye and traveling through the fabric can make the, the metallic start to fray which makes them you know really really hard to work with so using a bigger eye needle reduces that friction at the eye and also what it does is because your needle's a little bit bigger is it's creating a slightly bigger hole in the fabric which means the metallic can pass through the fabric a lot easier with a lot less friction so it is really handy to use a slightly bigger needle if you're using metallics it just makes your life a lot easier and again you're not being driven to drink unless you want to go drink in which case power to you so that's it for now uh if you have any questions please do feel free to let me know i'll put some links to some of the um i'll put the the names of all the the needles i've used in the bottom of the description so you can look them up and try and find them a lot of needle craft shops will sell these um uh like i got these uh, twin pointed needles from uh, chartingcreations.com so she's a canadian supplier and she got those for me which was great um the the easy guide ones it's available from her shop in on on etsy and obviously tapestry needles you can get pretty much anywhere but a lot of the bigger retailers like one two three stitch or so and so dot com dot co dot uk um 
just trying to think of other ones, Joann's, any Michael's, any of those shops will have the basics, whether they have the more specialty needles, I'm not sure, but you can check it out and see what you find. And that's it for now. I hope you have a great day. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Up in the top right of your screen, you're going to see a little pop up uh, for some free patterns that you can uh, get off of my site. If you uh, want to access those, just click that link. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe. Uh, more subscribers actually really helps more people like you find these videos and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye for now!